know this is all around book studies. And the reason we call it book study, David, is because quite often they're called book scrutinies. And I looked up that word scrutiny uh, as a de definition, and it simply said a critical evaluation. And I, I looked at that and I thought critical. It doesn't mean critical as an important critical. It means critical as in critical. <laughs> and as a teacher, I did find it quite stressful having my um, books collected. I had, a, you know, there was one instance where I had a, a, a maths coordinator who was wait, who waited in my classroom 20 minutes for me to finish my lesson so I could hand her the books. She wasn't going to leave until she had those books. And it, it's quite threatening. Uh, it can be a trigger. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to go with books, book study. I think that's better, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that this is really about getting the conditions right and redefining things. As with a lot of things that we're doing with the platform, we've got a legacy really historically where we've inherited some really unfortunate kind of approaches and, and a lot of it is evidence-based a lot of it's to do with inspection the pressures that we have as school leaders and so things like scrutiny uh, as with coasting ri there's a long list of things how we define those things and, and put those apply those things in school we can change the parameters we can we can sit down with our leaders and today i'm going to show you really how you can do that so that the conditions are right and you talked about people feeling threatened it's important that people feel safe um, and with book studies, because everybody's going to be doing them now, and we've got that distributed leadership and the accountability that goes with that, we want to really be looking very carefully at how we can roll that out and apply that and cascade that in our school. That's right. And I think that it's important that, again, when I, re when I became a head teacher, I realised a lot of that was my, well, that was my responsibility to create that culture that wasn't threatening, to create the language um and the the atmosphere where people felt safe to do that and, it, and it's easier said than done um but that was the aim and that's what we managed to achieve in the end so okay it's it's coming to the end of june it's yeah. absolutely silly season in school we've got it's the high pressure stuff <laughs> people are on the edge Please. um we've got a number of weeks till the end of term why now david why why, why book studies now okay because well logically there's there's some interesting that's a really it's, it's just a great question first of all i would say that if we've got pressure points we need to be looking at how we do things so don't get me wrong i get the sports day levers all all of the things a stack of of, of challenges that we have at the time of year but it does draw the question and, and and shines a spotlight on how we do things across the year because if we're doing observations or book studies and things like that we've got a whole you know administration chain going on behind the scenes we've got quite a lot of things where we should be reviewing those things potentially and looking to see how we can do those things differently that's the first thing i would say so um it, it's really about prioritizing time and energy so that we, we can make leadership sustainable across the year and that's really important uh, you know how we do that so we want to make good leadership sustainable secondly i would say really <clears throat> This is about, um, it's the best time. I mean, ultimately, what we're, we're in the habit quite often in schools of sending books home at this time of year. So, we, and, and, and like a lot of things we do in school, it sort of feels illogical when you take a step back. We worry, you know, we, the books, if, if we go into our classrooms now, we will not get a better representation of progress than opening the children's books. We'll get data, which is convenient, so we can use that. We take that away. We put that, you know, that informs some of our strategic planning. But in actual fact, how do we capture and assess and evaluate quickly that work in books? So from first page to last page, if, for example, I always talk about emergent writing in year one. So when the children come into the classroom and, and, and they're forming letters and communicating and it's crude, and the developing and the learning and we've got that breadth uh, you know we've got some children no doubt who are, who are progressing better than others but by the end of the year we've got sustained writing we've got sentences and how do we capture that but what do we do we send the books home we <laughs> say you know there you go parents there's and these are yours children and it's i understand why we do that but in actual fact that means we start in september almost forgetting what those expectations and outcomes were like 
So in September, we want to start. And can we have something that we're going to use, which is what we're going to do today when we look at the gallery, that's going to inform and help us to know what standards look like for next year. So we've got some continuity. Rather than shut the year down, send the books home and start again in September. So can we use those strategically to inform standards across school? And it's really, it, there's a really great opportunity to do that. And if we send the books home, yes, we might keep a few for inspection purposes or whatever. But again, it's it's for what reason? And quite a lot of the things that we do, if it is just for evidence and they're going to go in a dusty cupboard, then really we should be rethinking how we do these things. So you'll get the idea when, when I start to kind of show, you know, walk through how we do it. So obviously we're going to, today is a very practical session where including the free tile, we can show people how to do it. Does that answer your question? It does, in some it does way? yes. And um, I think it's worth adding at this point, one thing, um, I, I do a number of like talks and things like that to uh, various different groups. And one thing I say often about mm. books is we need to move away from them being the hospice for learning where, where it, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah. they, we spend so much time and effort putting into these books, yet we don't capture what's in them. And so today it's going to be really important that you'll see how to do that really easily, very quickly. Yeah. When all, as a head teacher's yeah. point of view, when all your teachers and their leaders are doing that, you can be really confident knowing that those books can then go home, but you've captured everything. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, so, sorry to throw uh, I mean, absolutely. As a head teacher, you want, you want your staff to be contributing to building that picture. So, and not for monitoring sake, you know, can we use it? Like I say, can it inform standards in school? And that's really when we've got really a thorough, continuous school improvement process albeit a supportive one so just looking really today at how we're going to work through the session <clears throat> the agenda that you've got there it's a pretty quick one not too much powerpoint and you'll be pleased to know this is going to be a session where i'm going to put it on the screen and and really show you how to do it but the trial access um it's in the chat so you can see there that the free trial there so if you're not a nautilus user we'll take a, <coughs> a quick look but in actual fact if you click the link there that says your free trial you can sign up there. It's as simple as that. So that's that kind of agenda item done. But that just means that, that everybody can log in who has who's not a Nautilus user. And we've got both with us today. Um, that means that we'll take a little look at how the users are set up very quickly. Um, then we'll think about about sort of creating the right conditions, the terminology we use. You talked about scrutiny, studies, those kind of terms and redefining those in school. And I've got some key things there uh, as well to help. Um, I've just got a question popping up there, which looks really interesting. So, um, yeah, we're going to take a little look at, at setting the system up. So we've got our, our users, our observers, our team in, in the system. We're going to look at performing the study and I will literally sort of walk through step by step so that you can see how to do it. There's also some content on our YouTube channel that will will do that as well. And let's not forget there's a video link so you can follow this up and, and follow those kind of key points. Uh, we'll look at analysis, feedback and reports. I always think that we undermine quite often learning walks and book studies by not being timely with our feedback. And that's more often than not because of the administration involved. So we'll take a look at that and how we can make sure that that's good quality. Uh, creating your own content, we could take a quick look at that just so that everybody understands really that the platform helps you, enables you to create your own book studies and so on and uh, free content. So we've got some book studies really that you can download and add to your system as well and you can do that on the trial version so you can have a look at those too and obviously Q&A but you know throw them in you know share them with us as we move through the session and David if you don't mind while I'm clicking around just sort of sharing some of those I, questions. I uh, we had a quick one. We've got one that's popped up there. So, do you want to read that one while I just sort of yeah, get set up and put no things on? So, the Andrea, screen, uh, please. brilliant, brilliant uh, statement you put there. So, Andrea's saying they don't send books home; uh, they keep them and use them for the next year. And I've always been a, I've always yeah. been an advocate of that. Um, did that at my school, um, which was well, we moved to that system, which uh, was, was much better. We felt a little more confident that we had all that evidence. Um, so what we can do today is show you yeah. kind of, if you're doing that system, how you can capture the beginning and the end of a year, for example, yeah. so you can show that journey in a year, even though you've got the books that might be showing yeah. things further. Um, and just want another thing, David, as uh, well, I think you mentioned feedback. Yeah. Now I'm looking yeah. back to my experience of book studies or book scrutinies as they were back there. 
and I rarely got any feedback yeah. um, as a teacher. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, a learning learning walks the same as well, David. Yep, nothing. I mean, a learning walk would be maybe after a learning walk, the head might say in a staff meeting, "Thank you very much. Everything went well." Yeah, that was it. You know. Well, I would say that really, that what we're talking about there is monitoring, aren't we? Indirectly, that's that's a bit of a kind of the process of sort of almost kind of checking that it's a, it's a quality control sort of issue. Yes, you can find some things out to feedback collectively, but we're, we're missing an opportunity there, I would say. So again, but just going back to Andrea's point as well. Yeah, it's, it's great that we're using those things. I mean, in some sense, what we're going to do today is, is, is use a bit of tech to do the same kind of things, albeit we can create a gallery. And I think that's the thing where we can showcase things. So, you know, we're able to all access that and build that picture over time. But uh, same principles, uh, just different, a little bit of tech to help us out with that. So um, we're on the, the, the platform now. Hopefully you can see that. Tell me otherwise as we click through. But um, we're logging in. And that means <clears throat> once you've set up your trial account, that's how it will work. You'll, you'll receive an invitation. Uh, check your spam or trash, by the way, because sometimes school filters intervene and then you can log in. So once you've set up your account, that's that's nice and quick to be able to do. Um, and, and also we can provide tech support if you need any. Uh, so I've got my dashboard. When you log in for the first time, yours will be blank and yours will look very different to mine. The whole idea with the dashboard is that everything is funneled into one place. So all of our learning walks, book studies, surveys, drop-ins, everything comes into one place. And for me as a head teacher, I've got that overview so I can see what standards look like. We're going to come back and look at this because this is not really the, the main point of today's session, albeit it's a good starting point because it sort of shows you what the end looks like before we look at the process. So here I can see all of my different activities all and, and I can we're, we're going to kind of take a, a closer look at some of the numbers. What is tell us, telling us drill down a little bit, get some more insight before we finish today. The, the thing that I talked about and you were, you were talking there about feeling safe and the conditions. One, one thing that we're going to start with, really, and I think this is really important, we added this feature after talking to schools, um, and, uh, and and we want to kind of get the conditions right in school. So we've got a rubric in the background, so obviously that enables us to get some analysis, which helps us to prioritise our time to see progress, uh, to, to evidence things, it helps us to be credible, and I'll show you how we can use that data that's 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 building in the background. And we can switch things on and off. But what we're going to do is going to redefine them. So the terminology that we've got is the Ofsted terminology in the system, the default. And that just enables us, and we'll, I'll show you at the end, to kind of be credible in some uh, with some audiences. So we need that when we're talking to the LA. When we need that, inf uh, that those statements when we're talking to inspectors. We need it when we're, when we're, we're generally with the outwards facing meetings so that we're credible and we've got that consistency. But internally, we can use whatever terms we want. So we could take this rubric and I'm going to go with prioritize, develop, effective and, and highly effective. So I would have sat with my team and said, right, what terms do we want to use? The rubric is really critical and helpful. It's going to give us an awful lot of insight, but we don't have to use those terms in the classroom. There's no reason why we have to do that. So, and you can also change the color schemes too. So I've gone for a nice hot pink then on prioritize, just so we can, you know, we can look and see things nice and quickly. So that's the starting point. When I when I change those terms there, that's going to apply it to the whole system, and we're going to use those for as long as we like, really. So we're going to move really across to the users. Any any points there really in relation to that kind of terminology? How does it make you feel, David? Do, do, you know, are we, is that what you were saying really in, in relation to kind of feeling a little bit threatened and book scrutiny? It's a little bit like the deep dive as well. Some of the terminology is unfortunate. There is, and I, I like the idea of having this conversation as a staff, letting them decide, you know, uh, what's, what's the terminology going to be? But there's something about, I don't know, it, like lesson observations or uh, as well it's similar thing that teaching is i don't know if it's just me but teaching is quite a personal thing you know your personality the way you do it it's a performance and so when you're being watched um, you do feel like you're being judged and it's the same the learning that goes on from mm. that into the book it's a similar thing you, yeah. you can kind of feel quite precious over it um that it's yours um mm. And it reflects mm. a lot about your teaching. So it does feel high stakes automatically. 
Yeah, it does. And it does. And I think that that's where we're, we're kind of constantly thinking about challenge and support. And what does that look like? And, and, and it should shift dependent on the vulnerability of your school, the teachers that you're working with, where they are, the career stage. You know, there's lots of things where, where you know, it's not a fixed position challenge and support. So how do we apply that differently in different sort of contexts? But we do need the challenge. Uh, we do need to play the game and we can do that with the system. So what I'm doing here is I'm just populating my list um, with with my observers. So this is obviously going to be my senior subject aspect leaders across school. Um, and just a quick check on here that, that for those uh, people who are new to the system and also those ones who are familiar that we're, we're setting up properly really to make sure that we've got everybody set up. So I've got Tom Smith who I'm adding to the system here as a senior leader. Um, priority user can see everything, all the information coming into the system generally tends to be head teachers, those people who are uh, senior leaders, uh, deputy head teachers, those people who need that information for, like I say, for those big outwards meetings. Internally, uh, leadership users, uh, so this could be subject, senior aspects, senkos, early years, any of those people. Uh, all teachers really have leadership responsibilities now. So we would add them as a leadership user. Then what we can do is assign them some subject areas. So with this person here, I can assign him science and DT. And that means that Tom will have a dashboard that is just science and DT. So that's helpful for him. And obviously, if he wants to do a science book study, you know, that's the next step as well. But I can add Tom to the system. Is he an external partner? Um, is not external. If he is external, we check the box and that makes it explicit. And it's good to add those external people because we can add the science lead from the school down the road. We can do a book study with the maths lead. And, you, uh, you know, in year six, we have those partnerships across the whole school. Let's tap into those and utilize those so we can do use Nautilus to do a quick book study, but with that external verification as well. So we're ramping up the credibility. Um, so we're going to add that person. Uh, Tom goes into the system now and then, you know, we're, we're good to go. So I've, I've added him as an observer. He gets an email invitation to, to log into the system. That's a great time with my leaders and my staff to say, you're going to be able to use the system. Nautilus is a school leadership tool. You're a leader. This will support your workload. And I think that's really important. So the perception is that this is not top down and it's not an appraisal based exercise. And we're not going through a checklist of teacher standards which are not in the system so that's a good chance to say those things to the to staff and so that they can use it uh, that that dashboard we looked at everybody's going to contribute to building that picture and putting the all the book studies and learning walks that we do is going to generate data and insights that we can all use particularly as a head teacher um, so we add them as staff as well so yes they're going to be observing yes they're going to be in the classroom and what I'm going to do now really is going to start to move across and, and we're going to take a little look and I'm going to go across to create now and I'm going to set up a book study. So this is really kind of the, the, the main focus for the session. How do we do it? How do we use the system to do it? Uh, so I'm going to go into here and we're just going to take a look at the framework, how it works, what the design looks like um, and how it's going to help us in school. So we're going to click create. And then I'm going to give it a very specific focus. So in here, for example, I'm going to do key stage one uh, writing. And I'm going to put in a date as well. And you might you might wonder why I'm being so specific here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to I'm going to just click into there. I want to be even more specific, but I'm going to put middle middle ability and i'm just going to use a little bit of terminology there just to be able to kind of refine that a little bit now the reason why i'm not going top middle and bottom is i want this to be something where we can do it frequently so this is not necessarily about doing it once a year this might be something that i do fairly regularly so if i do top middle and bottom all in one report um, I've got quite a lot of insight information going into that report and it's it could be a little bit chaotic. There could be a little bit sort of too much. And then also it makes the the, uh, the actual book study longer, uh, which means it happens less often and there's more administration. So regardless, that's totally unavoidable. So if I say middle ability and I've got an hour of leadership management time or we're doing a staff meeting next week, I can get this done in 30 minutes. So it's it's sharp, it's concise, it's quick, it's frequent, and we're building up professional dialogue along the way. And I can also focus it if I want to do on the higher achievers 
or the pupil premium or whatever groups I want to do. But here, that's the focus for my book study here. I'm also labeling it very clearly. Sorry, just to go through thread through needle, but I'm labeling it really clearly. So in here, when I when I use the search tool, I can key in writing and it will bring up all of the writing work that we've done, including learning walks. And if I key in then key stage one, it will refine that search. So over time, I can build up a nice portfolio that I can use and go to. Nice I'll just stop there, David. Um, uh, so, yeah, of course. Yeah, consciously, what, we, what we've done there, you've lowered the stress stakes as well. For a teacher's point of view, just being able to hand in two middle ability books, it lowers the stakes. Um, and the fact that if these become more often, it helps drive that culture uh, rather than just once a year. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can get some some feedback on that. And I think that that's the thing, you know, quite often working with children with additional needs, for example, and if I was a Senko or if I was a, a subject leader looking at that group, because let's say my school, you know, children with special needs, which they were, we were a big school, we had sort of 15 percent. I would have been doing I would have been very interesting for my staff to do book studies focusing on on that specific group um you know send children particularly uh you know boys possibly there were certain groups that were underachieving and how what insight could we use so you can see how that focus can really help us and we can do it quickly and concisely so i've just added while david was talking there the, the survey book study um and also the subject which enables us really just by putting english in it means it filters that information on the dashboard which is helpful day will roll so it will it's done when it's done so if i get interrupted and i need to finish it on you know by the the end of the week no problem that's absolutely fine so it will it will it will stay open it's there's no time window uh judgments uh well i mean the terminology again is unfortunate but we're not using them so we can switch them on or off i'll show you what they look like with or without but having said that, I've redefined them anyway. So I've changed the terminology so they look very different. But for this one, I'll just show you kind of what they look like with them and you'll get the idea. But they're going to get they're not going to work as judgments now. They're going to work really as prompts. Um, so I've now created my book study, um, but I haven't assigned it. So for me as a head, I could at this point assign these to different people. So I could assign it to um to my science lead or whatever and i could set them all up so that this half term we got a book study for each and then say to everybody right do it in you know can you get this done by by the end of the month so they can be rolling and like i said they're open so we can work that way uh, alternatively they can go in as a leadership user and they could set one up themselves anyway so there's a nice little bit of training there where tom could come in and set up his own science one for next tuesday so anyway we set it up you can see here this is this is uh, it's not ready to go yet because we need to add our observers. Um, and let's say we're going to add uh, for this one. Let's just keep it really simple. So this is me and I'm Jules Verne and I've got an hour of leadership and management time. Now, often we give our staff a bit of leadership and management time, but we don't necessarily get anything back from it. So we kind of it's a bit of a mystery sometimes. It's you know, we, we know it's at a premium, but what are we going to gain from that? So um, in here, I'm going to let's say we are two form entry key stage one we said um so let's choose a couple of people let's go with james and let's get lillian in there too um and so that means that we've got four people and each of those four teachers there are going to give me middle ability two or three books so each of those teachers is going to get some recognition uh, i'm going to acknowledge i'm going to make it a priority that i can acknowledge what's good how hard they're working I'm also going to offer some feedback, so one or two key points per teacher. So you'll notice here that I'm not putting it in per book. So I'm not putting it in an entry for each book. I'm putting one entry into the system for each teacher. And it's saved those automatically now. Um, so we're good to go. As we move now across from create into the walks, you'll see that my to-do list now has pop been populated with each of those book studies. So I'm going to put one entry in per teacher so that I can give them that recognition and that feedback. At this point, um, it's a good way really to kind of take a quick look um, at how it's configured on here. Um, so as I go into here, you'll see on the iPad, so if I want to use an iPad, and this is kind of where the benefit is when it comes down to being mobile, obviously moving around and also capturing and taking those photos. So let's use the iPad as we would do with a learning walk and it just gives you that feeling of separation we set it up we close our laptop we go home relax and next morning we log in 
and we're ready to go. So um, I pick up James's books um, and let's start with him. And what we've got really is a framework that's going to help us and it's going to it's going to guide us. So just talk a little bit. I need to talk really a little bit about the design of this. When we were designing all of our content, our frameworks in the system, and the big disclaimer is that you can create your own and you can write your own and you can edit ours and everything else. Um, but the thing about it that we needed, we needed consistency. So for everybody, because we've got maybe 10 different leaders, we needed to make sure we were all looking at the same key aspects and making sure that we we're you know, hitting the right priorities. We also need to make sure that it's nice and concise because that's what makes it quick and feedback orientated. If we just have descriptors in here, Ofsted, and the more content that we have in here, the rule is the longer it takes. So the longer it takes to do it, the less often it happens, the more formal potentially it becomes. So we just want some nice quick prompts because like I say, these five areas, six areas that we're gonna look at here, we're gonna give the teacher maybe one or two uh, key areas to kind of to consider and also some, like I said, some good recognition. So whilst we talked, you talked at the beginning about scrutiny, this is an opportunity as well to be able to kind of identify best practice and share, which is what we're going to do when I, we take the pictures. Um, so we're looking at presentation. Uh, what we're not doing, by the way, is we're not putting in what that standard should look like. It's the application of your presentation policy. So however that needs to look, so how the, the staff apply that in the classroom. We can use a stylus. We've got a nice £20 Amazon one here, which has got an Apple build, which is really quick and easy to use. You can rest on it. It will convert it to text in the same way that you can also use the voice typing. So if you want to do, we can voice type. And I think that that's a really good way. It feels a bit daft. It's a bit of a shift, but um, it certainly works. So here I'm looking at the books and I can see that the work is well pre presented in here. So just a couple of sentences. I don't need to put very much. It's going to be structured in a report, nice and, and you know, it's going to be credible and it's going to have all of this content. So it's going to be really, you know, presented well. I don't need paragraphs and paragraphs. Um, content, then we're going to look at the age appropriate program of study. So this is where we're looking at pitch and pace, the progression in learning. We're making sure that we're, you know, the coverage, if you like, is is there. What we are doing really is getting all of the knowledge that we need that would be useful for a deep dive, but we're not doing deep dives to ourselves. So we are actually doing it for the right reasons for feedback and school improvement and professional dialogue, but it will certainly enable us to be knowledgeable about our subject areas because we're using those prompts and that's what's going to help us. If it's highly effective, by the way, I might put that in as a next step and I might come back to that and that enables me then to use that to share that um, or, and to, to come back to that and to prioritise it in the same way that if we can see in here that we've got a teacher who's new to a year group and so therefore we're, or an ECT, we can also make that a next step in the feedback and put that out so we can take care of that quickly. Pupil contributions. So we're looking at regular and sustained application. So have they got sufficient time to secure it? That's really what we're looking at with this one, with the contributions. So, you know, it, it gives us that sort of, that balance of learning, modeling, scaffolding, and then application. So can we see that process taking place? Lots of schools working currently on stamina and, you know, just, uh, sustained writing. So that's that could be that one. Um, but, but, you know, we need to make sure that the, the, the books show uh the things that they get wrong as well so it's all part of that process progress but we're looking here really towards the up this is not a statistical measure this is not an Ofsted kind of grade this is not about 73 percent this is really on the day there's the objective did they secure sufficient progress Monday to Friday we can look at that so if they were doing fractions did they get it what's it look like on Monday what's the process look like what the outcomes like on Friday. So we can measure progress there, first page to last page. So this draws us back to that point at the start of the year when I talked really about how we can, uh, you know, take the books and look at that first page and then at the last page and say, what does that look like? A couple of sentences to commend. So in here I'm seeing, you know, some, some significant writing. Can we capture that? Can we give that feedback? Because our teachers are working really hard and they forget to flick from first page to last page. All they're bothered about is the next one. They forget that pick that big picture. Can we use this as an opportunity to say, you know, what a knockout bit of, you know, that's a, that's your year's work. Great work for a teacher. It's it's very significant. 
but for the children arguably as well you know we can capture this in a really good way where it's some very credible evidence here about how good your school is uh, and i mean that evidence in in giving confidence to leaders so challenge uh, we're looking at challenge and support so we're looking at the breadth of, of the uh, breadth of the curriculum and marking of feedback as well so the application of your policy whatever that may look like we're looking at the impact of it and so that just enables us those six areas to have some consistency obviously we can apply it to maths dt uh you know science history geography so that gives us six areas that we're all focusing on that, that looks at the coverage looks at the curriculum looks at the marking all the kind of aspects the breadth all of the common things the components really and we can gain an awful lot just by having that kind of clarity um so why are we using a rubric again we're getting the data and we'll come back to that but it's also enabling us to to identify what good and best practice looks like so I'm coming to your favorite favorite bit now, David, because we're going to take a picture. So whilst I'm doing the book study, we're taking a shot. Do you want to talk a little bit about that sort of terminal capturing and how we can yeah, use this? No, yeah, you're right. I do get a little bit overexcited at this point, everybody. I do apologize, but it's a lovely, a lovely uh, development that was put in. Um, we, we're looking at being able to capture, and that's a really non-threatening uh term here where you can go through and see something very quickly with your tablet your ipad whatever it is you're using you can go and grab a picture but tag it and we know with tags that these are all searchable and you can build up if you imagine teachers doing this um you know across your school as a head teacher i can't think of anything better in terms of sitting back and thinking this this system is being populated by our own experts in those fields. So your Senko might be doing it, your writing lead will be doing it, your maths lead will be doing it, and creating these tags. Um, so you can see you've got English, year two, send, it's descriptive writing, it was done on a big write, uh, expected standard. Now you might want to agree across your staff of some terminology or some little abbreviations. So you might, you know, Big BW might be big right, you know, um, expected standard might be ES or whatever it is. But as long as you're consistent across the board, you can get these tags. And when we start to look at the gallery, we'll come back to the gallery uh, shortly. Um, you'll see the impact of doing this and how you can then go through because, um, you know, from new starters for teachers, um, highlighting um, moderation and making sure you've got the right uh examples and ex ex exemplars and things like that but it's a really cool little tool that if everybody's using can be a fantastic bank of um gold dust i would say david yeah i mean my camera won't take a shot because obviously uh it's in use uh, but this is the bit where all of your leaders we talk at the start and we, we why are our leaders to capture the best practice because what it's going to do in that in that gallery is it's going to send it there it's communal everybody can see it and then we can raise awareness of what standards look like and we can raise standards at the same time and as, as we said we're going to come back to take a look at the gallery shortly but we're just quickly taking shots so every time we do a book study across the year and when we say we're capturing best practice that doesn't mean again top of the class this could be a child with specific needs who has excelled so the progress is significant in that lesson however that may look we can take that picture we can use the send tag we can kind of highlight those things as a sync or as a class teacher or whatever it may be so lots of potential for really being able to dig down and use that and create a, a, a data curate a database of best practice and that's why we talk about capturing so obviously this this tool also works with our our uh, learning snapshots so when we're doing learning walks we can use it at the same time be taking pictures at the same time while the children are in session and you'll get an idea how that looks so i can't upload it because <clears throat> there's no shot there but we'll come back to it in the gallery but that is equally as important and powerful as uh, anything else that we're going to do so we're going to enter that into the system um and i'm just going to pop back then to here where it's a little bit clearer and refresh this page <clears throat> because what we'll find then is that this book study goes into the complete column here 
and I can go back there and I can edit it if I want to do so it's not fine I I can tailor it a little bit or if I work with a colleague I can do that I can also if I want to do email that feedback directly to the teacher and you might want to just email it to yourself to have a play to see how it looks and feels um, because there's a time and a place for doing it that way but obviously if you want to maximize impact a conversation professional dialogue and then being able to kind of share that feedback if, if at all possible and then you can see here obviously I've got three more entries to do so you could see how quickly I could be able to do that those that rubric the, the, those statements and by the way we're using lines of inquiry six lines of inquiry and four prompts so I would refrain from using judgments because I don't see really in there where that that would sit so middle ability so that's how that one works so that's the process we've we've had a good look at there what we'll do now is we'll just take a little look at <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we'll take a little look at some of the feedback and pay attention really to the gallery in particular so we'll just fly through the feedback so so that's all going into the system uh, we can see how that works um how do we use that information well as david mentioned in particular at this time of the year you can find yourself in the staff room a week after doing the book study and somebody will say to you uh how are we going to get any feedback from that book study and you go oh, yeah yeah we'll, we'll just start putting it together I'll, I'll i'll sort it out for you and so you so they've given you the book and in your case david they were in the classroom they were at the back they were observing they got the books they did it and that's it's like what now so in actual fact in all, all to add value let's make sure that the feedback is equally as thorough as the process and you can see how quick and simple the process is by the way so um the blue buttons are the feedback analysis and, and so on and uh, reports so we're going to go across to the workflow this is a very quick way to be able to feedback and what will happen here is this plucks out all of the commentary you can see here these may not be from book studies they may be from uh, you can see we've got a personal lesson study here um, let me see if I could come down and just see uh, we've got lots of send evaluation and feedback so we've got lots of different activities for me as a priority user as a head I could see everything coming into the system but more importantly if I'm a leader so you can see here we've got a snapshot uh, and and that's a, a learning walk so here the leader can take the commentary that they've done they've put that into the system so if I'm Tom and I'm the science lead and I've just done a book study on science I can take my iPad at the end of the day click on my workflow and then share this with my colleagues so that enables me to do it instantly there's no time delays I can go and I can have that chat shoulder to shoulder it's a bit softer it's a bit more informal but it just enables all our leaders to work together when we've got a flow of this activity happening because again that's about getting the conditions right so perfect for being able to sit down and have a chat and give that feedback and as you can see here there's no judgment at all it is literally just commentary we can also add an action to it if we want to say this is really great let's share this next tuesday that enables me to be able to come back and prioritize this as a leader but this is about the leader giving and sharing the dialogue with uh, with the teachers so that's what this is for and this is why uh, nautilus is is a leadership tool if i go up and open my actions it will list all of the ones that are live and i can check them off so that just enables me to be able to revisit those and kind of see them quickly in my workflow like i say the head the priority user can see everyone's but the the subject leaders can see theirs and then use it the same day they don't need to to, to worry about being able to get somebody else to do that for them if we click the box that said next steps there was a little check box um, i can click that and it will show the next steps that i've identified and i can come back and again it creates a little to-do list plucks those out so we can come back and and support those so you might have things which are a priority ect and this is about being able to kind of manage uh you know prioritize your workload and decide which is the most important thing to do and the least important thing and those kind of things so it's 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 giving you a good flow to be able to do that so we're going to come across then to the dashboard and just a quick bit of interpretation really on on where things are you will find this out if you are a, a trial user you would now see when this is complete this data on that dashboard so what this would enable me to do what is what's telling us is we can see how many entries in in progress i've got four out of the ten so if i was doing a book study four entries out of the ten and like i said i could do it over a week so if i'm a busy senko with a lot of reporting to do i might be able to do this over a week 
or, or a term or something like that. But obviously, you know, good window is good. We used to do it in a staff meeting and have a dedicated staff meeting. Everybody brought the books. Every leader had what they needed, and then they all went and did it in directed time. And at the end of it, we had a report for each subject. So I had a, you know, and that's an amazing way to be able to kind of spend a staff meeting. At the end of it, you know, I could go in as a head teacher and I could see, I could see seven different subject areas all being sort of, you know, book studies going into the system. So here, what we've got is, like I say, who's been involved. The the scores that we've got here. The idea with the system is that it gives you a ballpark score. So it combines the data in the system. That just means at a glance, I can see what the outcomes were. There's no, it's not assigned to Ofsted. Uh, I've got my average here for the school, so I can compare and benchmark and see how does this fare in comparison. So yours would be different to mine, and it's entirely personal, you know, related to the school. That just gives me, a, and that's there for guidance. We don't want to create another Fisher Family Trust where we have to kind of drill down, filter, you know, anal analyze three times a year with excessive data. We want this quick, easy consumption so we can act on it. I can see here all of my book studies. So this shows me all of the entries going into the system. It gives me an idea as to what standards look like in book studies, along with all of my other monitoring and activities that we've got, learning snapshots here, my surveys, so I can see what my parents think too, all in one place. But the book studies, you know, it just gives me that that overview as a head in particular. So I've got, um, you know, I can see what the outcomes are like. And it's applying that to those terms still, as it will do across the system. And if we wanted to, we can then filter uh, by different surveys and also by subject. So if I want to filter by English, then my dashboard becomes subject specific. I can see what my snapshots look like, my book studies in English and so on. So you get the idea as, as to how we can, as leaders, then get an overview and, and, and certainly as a head teacher, deputy head teacher as well, see that, that you know, that uh, how, how everything compares and strengths and areas for improvement. I won't go too much into the data. Um, because it's it's self-explanatory but we'll take a little look if i key in here key stage two um actually am i going to let's go let me just have a little look maths uh, maths book so we've got a maths book study here upper key stage two and if i click into here it's just going to give me a quick report and at a glance i could see it and again discuss it with my leaders so highs and lows, I can see who's contributed. So that's where it's really good when you've got somebody external. We can see a ballpark figure there and each entry from each person. Uh, we can see strengths. Obviously, that gives us a quick idea of being able to identify and prioritize our time. Who do we need to feedback first? We can get an idea as to how this one compares to all time. So this exercise, uh, you know, how did this one compare to the big picture? which is what the data is doing down here again. It's showing me this statement here, for example, presentation. Over time, what's the big data set look like? What's the context? And how does this one fare in comparison? So we can see again, we can benchmark all the time, just see really quickly. And we wanted to create a platform which just generated professional dialogue, enable people to act quickly. We don't want to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and try to remember what our data set looks like. So that's how that looks. And obviously, if we want to take that away in a report, that's how the report looks. So we can see uh, it's personalized. It's got highs and lows. The whole idea with the reports really is that we can share it. So if I send the report now to my governors, they would be able to understand it uh very quickly we could see the strengths the areas you know for improvement who's been involved and again being nice and explicit if you are doing a book study with the maths leader from the school down the road it would say so you would have two maths leaders doing it if you've got three or four and you're doing moderation excellent the credibility of, of your report goes up and then we've got two sort of halves to the, the report, which is going to help you. The feedback is instant. David mentioned earlier about the importance of, of timely feedback. The top half is kind of like a quality of education report. So this is no mention here of teachers or lessons. What we can see here is we can see, again, those two data sets, the big picture, all time, and this one compared. So we've got that benchmarking and some really simple data to be able to see this, understand it, easy consumption sharing minutes most importantly i would be able to say if i was the D uh, the science lead i'd be able to say thanks very much it was really good i've got a lot of you know from it uh we can use this is good this is good this is good and we're going to work on this one so it just enables you to kind of 
make sure that having those people when they when they generously give you your books they're getting some recognition and they can see as well uh, so the top half is a really good one for obviously the key stage as we go down to the bottom half we had the workflow which was shoulder to shoulder softer feedback and everything else this is another way of feeding back so we can use this really to kind of create professional dialogue again so uh, the way that it worked in my school is staff came to see me the next day and then I, I was able to kind of sit with them and just give them some feedback so this one's fairly healthy you can see so this is where again it's healthy to have the analysis but having said that we're not using any judgments on here there's no reference and we have changed them as well but this does really enable me to see the best practice so this this chat here i might be saying to this person this is really good i'd love you to work with this person or you know building bridges um and you can use these obviously for conversation this one is less strong but it might be i've spotted something here so i might need some more support i might need a 15 minute conversation so i can wait my feedback uh, prior to time where where needs must across the school so strategically we are really kind of finding identifying and working to prioritize these areas and and throughout and across the year so we've got some good analysis there um so let's pop back uh, to to the main area and i'm gonna just head for the gallery david do you want to talk a little bit really we talked about capturing we looked at analysis we've looked at feedback so all of those things are taking place um, yes the, i mean I've, I've said before huge fan of this um and what you can see now is basically the, the whole the whole gallery that's been uh, populated by the members of staff it might be children in early years showing you something it might be displays um lunch times it could be you know construction dt you can see the calculation uh, for maths and so long as you're tagging these in a way that you can search for them then you can think about ways in which you can use this as the school there's the usual stuff like maths year four you know it might just be that part of your induction process if you've got quite a high turnover of staff you know one of your induction activities might be for your new teacher just to spend 20 minutes on the gallery um, go and type in year four maths go and have a look at what the maths coordinator the math leader has deemed expected and exceeding. So they can really mm. get to grips with pitch in terms of preparing over the summer for planning purposes and things like that. It might be as a school, you're working on something whole school. It might be um, independent reading. It might be, you know, a presentation or handwriting or something. And you can cr across the school work on something and have an agreed tag so that after six months you might evaluate that and have a look um andrea spot on there uh in the chat there moderation and standardization yep year four writing mm. exceeding you know expected and you can really have a bank yeah. of um you know great examples showcasing what that looks like to all your teachers to your support staff and showing anybody that might be asking you know your local authority or your inspectors that might be coming along what it looks like in your class in your school uh, across your school and what your expectations are so a lot of this david is around how you want to use this as a school uh, and that's the beauty of it in terms of creating your own tags mm. absolutely i mean you, you asked me at the start why this time of year and Andrew was right when she, <clears throat> she was mentioning about how they use books. So the whole idea, obviously, is that, as I said, you know, that you can we can now look when the books do go home or they go into storage or wherever, we can actually key into here. The, the gallery is communal, so everybody can use it, can go into here, um, and that enables us to be able to kind of click very quickly and see what the outcomes were at the end of the previous year so if my leaders have picked the best and identified the best practice in school they've put that into the gallery when you go in in september i know what standards and outcomes should look like in year three writing quite right what you were saying there so i know what they should look like for maths fractions it depends how you want to focus things what you're looking at i know what you know come september what progress can look like for pupils with send if i've got a child in my class who's coming in who has a specific condition i can see what their work looked like the previous year the senkos kind of put that practice in there so i can see their progress um 
the feedback we've had when you know uh, leaders have used this uh, to be able to kind of talk to inspectors really the minute it, they put it on the screen and just are, are able to articulate what be knowledgeable about their subject areas talk about what standards look like you know also as you mentioned that external partner working with you and doing moderation together so we've got the the you know the english lead from the school down the road contributing to our gallery and we can see what they think too and got that verification it's rock solid and it's really good and, and it also shows right systematically how does the school do it how does the school kind of evaluate standards and it gets us away thankfully from relying completely on the convenience of data so we can see you know this is not for the benefit of evidence you know we talk about so much that we do is for evidence but it will be a fantastic way of evidencing standards albeit for school improvement purposes and you can use this at the start of a staff meeting we can key in here we can use it at the start of a governor's meeting governors if they've got a responsibility for for history they can come in and see what standards look like year one year two year three higher achievers are above are gd whatever it may be use the terms that you want and as david said your your gallery will will take shape but as it does alongside and obviously we've got learning snapshots that are taking place here as well learning walks so that's the other tool that really as a subject leader you would be using a learning snapshot just to quickly be able to evaluate standards in teaching and learning feedback to teachers in the same way so lots of really good potential I'll just add, for add that. something to that as well when, when yeah sure, please do i look it. back to pre-technology in terms of well pre-nautilus let's say and how how would this be done <laughs> without a tool like this. And I'm thinking, you know, we've all got, we've all had the uh, moderation files, or we've all had our subject leader file, and we might have some pictures of, some examples of displays, some examples of exceeding, uh, expected, working towards type of uh, images. But that's on my geography coordinator's desk or on their shelf in their classroom. The history is 35 mm -hmm. yards away in there, you know, and, and they're all scattered all over the place. But here you can go on at any time and see it all there. You don't have to collect the files in, you yeah. know, which is a nightmare. Um, you'd have to scroll through finding things. It's just at your fingertips. And it's just, for me, the gallery is, as you know, David, it's my favorite bit. Um, I think it's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in moderation as well. Let's not forget that in the commentary, when your leader is filling it in, mine's a demo account. So it's a little bit mumbo jumbo. But I would be able in here to show what the work demonstrates. So you were talking about moderating earlier. Uh, you know, in that commentary, I could be saying what this work demonstrates. ARE, what's the criteria? What are the what is the national curriculum? What's it reflecting? So if I wanted to add that detail in here, I could do. And as a leader, you know, as a if I'm new to year five and I want to see what descriptive writing should look like, or biographies, or whichever aspect that we're doing, I might come in here, click, use the filters, find it see those tags and, and and use those examples uh, there's just so many different ways it can support your staff in, in and it, it just it, it, with a little bit of sort of very simple technology it can yeah. be really great it can be so yeah. so important um and again it brings brings us back to confidence for leaders knowing being knowledgeable knowing what insights look like leaving the school knowing what standards look like again rather than wake, waking up thinking about your fisher family trust uh, outcomes and flight paths so we're going to finish just by kind of taking a couple a look at a couple of things the builder is a place where you can write your own so i've shown you ours which works really well and the principles behind it but if you said well ours have got a padlock on them there you can see but if you said we like your book study but we want to create our own um or you want to focus it so uh, uh, my school book study let's clone that one uh, that creates a copy up here and then we can come in here and we can edit those questions and we can tailor it so if you wanted to you could change it a good way to do that is sometimes you know if we've done book studies where you just take away uh the the prompts so you're literally left with you do a book study and it will just say prioritize develop high effective and highly effective you can remove the other content if you want so that it literally is just prompts and that works really well um the only thing about creating content in here 
is uh, it will create a new data set on your dashboard and you don't want to do too much of that. So whatever you create in here, you're going to create something and use it over and over again. So in my school, I would have had disadvantaged book study and I would have had one where we would have just done that across the subjects that would have built a data set that I could have then used for those reports and my pupil premium and governor's meetings and things like that. And that would because mine was we, we were high, we were 45 percent. So it's important that that was so we would have had a book study that was just focused very specifically and it siphons off that data. So we've got our book studies on our dashboard, but we've also got our pupil premium book studies separate. Uh, we can also import and export and share. So just a quick word about how we're working. If you go to our Facebook community here, you can see uh, we've got some content. So this is called Around the Moon Adventures in School Leadership. Anybody can join, but you can download and add content to your system. So we've created uh, a send book study. And that's just slightly different because obviously the progress measures, we're thinking about it in relation to individual progress. Uh, we've got surveys in there as well. You can download and add combined snapshots. So we're putting free content on there that you can add to your system. And also there's chat on there. Obviously, it's a Facebook group. So there's 500 people on there. We've got Pi Corbett now, David, I believe, uh, as, a, as an expert in there too. He's been chatting away he has, this week. Yeah, he, he, he likes a good... Um... Uh, a forum does pie uh, and you can actually you know great people like that that come yeah. in you can engage with them and milk them for their knowledge that's what i would do well we've got we've been talking to craig randall as well from the trust-based observation so hopefully he'll be joining us too uh it aligns nicely with that if schools are using that or even if you're just into those principles so just to finish off here um and sorry by the way if you want to import them that's you download them from the file section on the facebook group and you import them there so it's just a file that comes in seconds uh so here the settings uh we started off by changing the conditions now let's imagine that we want to kind of revert that back and save it so we are using those statements because I need to generate some reports for my LA, my governor's, it's end of year, and I want a set of reports. It will now apply those statements to everything so that I can uh, I can go in and into our dashboard. I can create reports that use those terms. You'll see how it's changed the look and feel, gives the <laughs> shivers, shivers kick in, but we can now start to see how we can use that to be credible with certain audience audiences and cons and be consistent so we can obviously change it back whenever we want along with the color schemes and everything else and play around with that but that's a good way to play the game to toggle uh, but to do things for the right reasons so at this point i am going to stop sharing and and head back the i suppose the final thing to mention really is just down here on the the company website so nautilus.education if you go down to the foot so there's lots of content in there and references from staff and prices and things like that but if you go down to the bottom as well you'll see here we've got some you can access the community here you can access the youtube channel or some tech support um the trial is there as well if you want and um, once you've set up the trial by the way you log in by uh, here um and newsletters lots of content in there really just to connect leaders and hopefully it can be something where you know as a tool it can really help you to prioritize as i said at the start of time i'm going to come back